Well, just uh, we mentioned we were talking about Korea and Japan and productivity, so we can check on the trading economics you can compare two countries. So we can see that Japanese productivity was higher than the Korean one. Okay, these two Japanese people is producing more goods with the same amount of time and money. Okay. But what's happened since 2010? So recently, it's about similar, right? I came to Korea in 2010. <laughs> Maybe there's some relationship. <laughs> it all changed since I came. I had a big influence on the country. <laughs> People start to be more productive. Are you more productive students now? <laughs> Do more in less time. So we can see that perhaps uh, the growth rate of the productivity in Korea was higher than in, in Japan. Also, Japan had an earthquake. Uh, it might have been more influential than me around that time. <coughs> so. How does the bank, the question then is, what does the bank use to predict the future? We saw that there are a lot of different things which can affect the exchange rate. So do you think the bank makes a very complicated model, puts in the data for all of the fiscal policy, the current account for everything, for the future, every time they need to calculate the exchange rate? Or they have an easier way? Some people make a mathematical model, they put in the numbers, the IMF estimates of the GDP growth, right? the government estimate of the government spending. They're just estimates because it's in the future, right? And then they put it into the computer and they do dee 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 dee, the number comes out. Okay? But that's some trading, trading uh, company who want to trade this, the foreign exchange. Banks have a much simpler way. Okay, banks just use the interest rate, the difference on the interest rate. So, the quoted forward rate is not a reflection of where the market makers, the banks, think that the spot exchange rate will be on the forward date. So, Lloyds Bank, forward rates are not the opinion of the dealer, of the bank. Okay, so the bank doesn't have their own model or their own opinion of making what the exchange rate will be in the future. So what do they use? Quick answer, the interest rate difference between the currencies, or the interest rate parity model. So we're going to look at, at this, examples. So a US investor has $1 million to invest for one year, and he can do either of these two investments. He can invest in his own government bonds and earn 20%, by 2% of the year, or they can invest in the Australian government bond and earn 5% a year. <clears throat> so if the US investor invests in Australian government bonds, they will receive a known amount of Australian dollars in one year when the bond matures. So if I want to invest in the Australian bond, I need to change my US dollars to Australian dollars. Then at the end of the year, I know how much Australian dollars I'll get back, and I'll need to change those Australian dollars back to US dollars at the end of the year. The principal repayment and the interest payment. <coughs> so then the question is, what is the risk for the US investor if they buy the one-year Australian government bond? Yeah, so what's the bad situation for the investor? Australian dollar gets stronger? Are you sure? The Australian dollar gets weaker. I'm going to get less money back. So if it's one to one, one dollar, US, Australian, what would be the Australian dollar getting weaker? One point five. So the base currency gets stronger, this number goes up. Okay? 
So I invest, it was one million, right? So I got one million dollars, Australian dollars. At the end of the year, I change back. How many US dollars am I going to get? Less than one million, right? Let's say 750,000 US dollars. Am I happy? No. No, so that's the risk, okay? So the foreign exchange exposure. The investor will be paid a specific, specified amount. The risk is like the exporter or importer, the Australian dollar can change. If the dollar weakens, the Australian dollar weakens, the US investor will get back less US dollars. So if the dollar, Australian dollar weakens by 2%, this reduces the return on the investment from 5.5% to 3.5%. So the next question is, what can the US investor do to manage the risk? So discuss with your partner. What can the US investor do to manage this risk? So, yeah. What do you think? Yes, so what do you need to do to fix? What's that called when you fix or lock the exchange rate? Hmm? So, they make the forward rate, right? Make the forward, forward contract. They use the forward rate to lock in the, uh, by selling the Australian dollars forward. Okay. So, you have to make some calculation here. So, assume a one year Australian government bond has a value of $1,000, right? So, you purchase 100 of these, so 100,000. Assume a coupon of 5.5%. Coupon is another way of saying you get the interest, right? But we say coupon and yield for bonds because it can be confusing. Okay. Assume the market maker bank quotes this exchange rate. This is the spot rate. This is the forward rate. So calculate the US dollar covered amount when the bond matures. You have to make a calculation. So you invest in the Australian government bond, you're going to get 5.5%. Uh, right? How many dollars do you have to pay now, to US dollars, to get this much Australian dollars? And then after, you're going to also make the forward contract at the same time. Okay? So how many Australian dollars will you get back? Indeed? And then, how many US dollars will you get back in the end? <clears throat> so we need to do a couple of different calculations.
Attendance while you're doing problems. So Kim Ye Ran. Trey Yun Song. Trey Yun Song. Kim Wei Ming. Trey Jin Yang. Kim Tae Kyun. Yun Sang Ho. Lee Gu Nam. Lee Jae Hyuk. Ju Gang Chan. Trey Yong Jae. Kim Da Gyeong. Moon Ju Won. Park Young Ju, Park Jung Won, Choi Jun Yoo, Kim Sang Hee, Choi Tae Min, Yang Hyung Suk, Lee Sung Ho, Mo Hyer, Thank you. 
So what do we need to do first? First we need to write the of numbers and to do the support. Yeah, so which one is it going to be? This one or this one? The second one. Yes, the second one. Why? Uh, because we write the Australian dollar. Yes. We're buying Australian dollars, so it should be more expensive, right? You have to give more US dollars to get an Australian dollar, not less. Okay, so that's going to be 100,000, right? So 100, 0, 9, 0. Okay, that's how much US dollars we need to pay. Then we'll get, we'll have, we pay this much US dollars, we will get uh, this much Australian dollars. Okay, then next, so that will give us 100,000 Australian dollars. What do we get back at the end of the year? What do we have to add on? Uh, so we need to add on the 5.5%, right? So it's going to be here, so like this Australian dollars. Now, what do we need to do? Change, uh, to change back to the US dollars. So which one are we going to use? Uh, the uh, first one. First one, right? Why? Because we uh, we sell the Australian dollars. You're selling the Australian dollars and you're getting US dollars, right? So you're going to get less, the bank is going to give you less US dollars. Okay? Not more US dollars. Okay? The lower number. So. If we change this number, multiplied by 0 0.965, what do we get? 101, and 107? Yeah. Yes. Right. Hmm? So what do you want to do? Invest your money in Australian bond or invest your money in the US bond with 2%? Yes. US bonds, right? So we made the calculation. So we got this much multiplied by this. We got 101807.50. But at the start of the year, we had this much. So if we got 2% of this, it's going to be, you know, 2,000. It's going to be 102, right? It's going to be slightly better. But quite similar. Of course, when we go to Australia, we have to pay transaction costs too, because buying price and the selling price was different. If we use the same buying price and selling price, we might find that it's the same. Right? But there's transaction cost. The bank makes some small profit on changing the money. Also the time, we have to spend more time organizing things. So this is called a covered return. A covered return or a hedge return. A covered return on a cross-border investment is the return after the foreign investments foreign exchange risk has been covered with the appropriate forward contract. So the forward exchange rate will determine the covered investment return for the US investment. So in the previous example, what do you think would be a percentage return to the US investor? What percent do you think they made? They, they had 100, 100090, and now they have 101. 870. What's the percentage return? Do you know how to calculate the percent or return? You have uh, time 1 mi minus time 0 over time 0. Okay? So we have two times. We have time 1 and time 0. 
Time zero now, time one after one year. Okay? So can you do this? What number do you get? It's going to be. Hmm? So we should have this kind of thing, right? So what's the percentage? Zero point zero one seven. So that's how much percentage that? One point seven percent. Okay. So which is better, to invest in Australia or invest in the U.S.? We've got 2% in the U.S. Yes. So we can also compare like this way, calculate the percent of our covered returns. So this here, we, this is called the IRR. You can use this computer program also, right? So why is the 1.7 different from the 5.5? So it's because of the forward rate, right? We use the forward rate and the Australian dollar is selling at a one year forward discount. Okay, the Australian dollar is getting weaker in the future. So according to the bank, the Australian dollar is going to get weaker. So our forward exchange rate is a weaker exchange rate. So that's why we didn't get the 5.5, we only got 1.7. Do you have any question about that? Let's have a look at another example. We have a one year Jap Japanese government bond with a 1% coupon, much lower than in Australia. So the value is 100,000 yen. These are the exchange rates. Calculate the covered return for a US investor. So you need to tell me the percentage of the covered return in yen. So you need, it's better to practice doing these kind of once, and be able to do if you have on a test, right? So don't just look at the answer, try to do the calculation yourself. money will we get back in US dollars, then we can calculate the percentage using this equation.
Danko Senja. First of all, we need to buy one hundred thousand yen, and to understand how many dollars we need, we have to divide this number to seventy-six point sixty-one. Okay. So why are you using the number on the left? In the last question, we used the one on the right. Okay, we're opposite. So. Very quick way, right? So why are, if we think about it, why are, what are we doing? We're buying yen. We are buying yen, it will be at the lower price, okay. so... The bank is going to sell yen to us at the low price, ah. right? And then buy back from us at the high price. So we use that exchange rate. So how many dollars do we need then to get 100,000 yen? 1,305. 1,305 dollars, okay, so this is going to be time zero, okay, then at the end of the year, uh, what we happens? We get 1% mm -hmm. yield, and it will be 101,000 yen. 101,000 yen, and how, um, which one will we use, the one on the left or the one on the right? On the right. Why? Quick way if you're in the test, we used the one on the left the last time, so we used the one on the right this time, right? But longer way. As we are selling Japanese yen, we sell them for higher price. Okay. So we're selling, this time we're selling the yen to the bank, right? So uh, the bank is going to take more yen from us, right? to give us one dollar back, higher number of yen. Uh, so, what do we end up with then in dollars? 1,373. Uh, 1, 3, 7, 3. 1,373. And this is time one. Okay, time zero and time one. So if we make this, uh, what hap what's our covered return? 5.2%. 5.2%. So let's check. So we can see here, yes. Uh, so why is this different from the 1%? Why is it Right, the bank thinks the yen will get, gives us a, uh, is it a forward discount or a forward premium on the yen? Forward premium. Forward premium on the yen, okay? So the, the bank is expecting the yen getting stronger, so it gives us a forward rate of a stronger yen. We can see the difference between the rates, right? Here it's 76, here it's 73. So, uh,
Which one, in this case, which one are you going to prefer to invest in? The US one or the Japanese one? Japanese one. Japanese one, right? You have covered return. You're sure to get that return, 5%. So, there is an idea of arbitrage. Arbitrage means there is some unequal situation where you can get some advantage. So, you don't usually have arbitrage. So, imagine that in Korea, I can get a loan from Shinan Bank, right? Two percent, and I can I can deposit. There's a deposit account in Hana Bank. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. At four percent. What are you going to do? Hmm? Can that situation exist? Yes. Are you going to go home and call all the banks, <laughs> ask them what their loan rate is, and call all the banks and ask what their deposit rate is? Try to find one which has a lower rate. What bank is similar? In current situation, another bank. But will it be lower? Yes. Will the loan be lower than the deposit? <laughs> Are you going to start a bank after? <laughs> no, no. I want to join your bank. <laughs> This doesn't usually exist, right? In a very rare case, you might find somebody for the mortgage loan, they might get a very low rate. Some other bank has a special offer, right? But very unlikely, especially not in the same bank. Okay. So the idea of the bank is they get get deposits at the lower interest rate and give out loans at the higher one. So this situation can, is like an arbitrage situation where everybody can make profit. Anybody can make profit. So we're just explaining the arbitrage situation. Okay? So if we have a covered return that offers a higher return than the investor's home market, it's the same idea. Everybody would invest in the covered return. Okay? So let's have a look at the example. So what it's basically saying is we can't have we can't have a high covered return. So the one year interest rate in the US is four percent, one year interest rate in Australia is seven percent. Australian one year forward rate is quoted at a discount of two percent. In this case, a US investor could invest in Australia, they could cover sell the Australian dollars forward and earn a covered return of 5%, 7% minus 2%, which is 100 basis points, 1% greater than the US return. So if this was the case, I could go to the bank, I know that I'm going to get this interest in Australia, is that going to change? The Australian government is going to pay me this interest, is that going to change? No, right? They're definitely going to pay me that interest, okay? I know that this is the forward rate in the bank. Is that going to change? The bank makes a contract. Can the bank change their contract? No, no, no. No. So therefore, I'm going to make some covered return here, which is greater than the return in the US by 1%. So everybody would do that, okay? Because that's sure, it's definite. Nothing can change. The bank will keep their unless the bank goes bankrupt, which is unlikely. Okay, bank keeps their word. The Australian government keeps their word. Then I make a return, which is higher than the one in the U.S. This is covered interest arbitrage, earning more than the rate at home. So this doesn't really exist. When we talk about when we talk about the carry trade, do investors in the carry trade cover their investment? Or don't cover their investment. Don't cover, right? They're hoping for the other side. There's a risk that they can lose their money. We saw in the graph that carry trade people did lose their money. The risk that the currency gets weaker. But they also had the opportunity the currency gets stronger. And that's what they want. So they're not going to make a covered, covered uh, <coughs> situation. Their point is they're not covered. They want to take the risk. But if we cover, 
there should be no arbitrage. So a covered interest rate arbitrage will exist basically when the bank makes an error. If the banks make a mistake, the forward exchange rate is not the correct price, then we might get this situation. But if the forward rate is priced correctly, we should have no uh, covered interest arbitrage. So if we go back to our original inv example, invest in a US government bond at, at earn 2%, invest in an Australian government bond and earn 5.5%. This is the situation of the bank. The bank is going to make Australian one-year forward quote at a discount rate of 3.5%. Then the covered return will be 2% in the US and 2% in Australia. So the bank uses the difference in the interest. Okay? The bank uses the difference in the interest to make their forward rate. Can you understand that idea? One of the reasons is because of arbitrage. The bank doesn't want the arbitrage situation to exist. So to stop the arbitrage situation from existing, the forward rate should be equal to the difference between the, the interest rate in the two countries. In this case, the difference in the interest rate in the two countries is 3.5%. So the bank's forward rate is going to be that the Australian dollar will be 3.5% weaker at the end of the year. So it won't matter whether you send your money to Australia or you keep in the US. You're going to get the same at the end of the year. Maybe you'll get a little bit less in Australia because of transaction cost. Do you have any question about arbitrage? So arbitrage is like... Our investors want to find an arbitrage situation. It means you can't lose. I can't lose in arbitrage because everything is locked in and it's sure I'm going to make that kind of profit. So to avoid that kind of arbitrage, the bank makes the, the, in, uses the interest differential or difference between the interest when they're calculating their forward rate. So this is called the interest rate parity model. So, the interest rate parity model, do you understand parity? Parity means like equal or the same. Things are in parity, they're the same. So we're talking about, it's the same whether I invest in the US or Australia. It's a parity. So, this equilibrium rate, do you understand equilibrium, like balance? Okay, this balance rate is the forward rate that precludes, stops, preclude means stops, covered interest arbitrage. So the exact phrase is, in equilibrium, in balance, the forward rate on a currency will be equal to, but opposite in sign to, the difference in the interest rates associated with the two currencies. So basically the forward rate is the difference in the interest rates. So this makes an equilibrium situation. So the equilibrium forward rate is whatever forward rate will ensure that two cross-border investments will yield the same return when covered. So I can invest in Zimbabwe, I can invest in the Congo, I can invest in Korea or Russia or any country, one-year bond, and make the forward contract I'm going to get the same amount of money as if I kept my money in the US. Because the forward rate will be the interest rate difference. So even though I get a higher interest rate in another country, the forward rate will make up for that difference. So in the end, it's balanced. I'm going to get the same amount. That's the idea of this IRP model. Do you have any question about that idea? So, so here we can see uncovered and covered interest rate differentials, US dollar versus other currencies. This is the French franc before the euro, the Deutsche Mark, the yen, and the sterling. So I'm not sure if you can see the colors. The blue line, this is the blue line, right? So the blue line is the covered interest rate differentials. Okay. 
uncovered differentials minus the three month forward exchange rate premium. So this is the key line. This one is the one we're looking at. Okay. Uh, this is the uncovered. The black line is the uncovered. So if we uh, make some uh, covered interest rate difference, we're not making any profit. Okay? We're not making any profit. Zero. This is our return. So if we cover our investment, it doesn't matter whether we invest in French francs or US dollars. It doesn't matter whether we invest in Deutschmark or US dollars. It doesn't matter whether we invest in yen or US dollars. Okay? That's our covered return is always going to be zero, around zero, because the bank sets the forward rate at that interest rate difference. Okay? But if we didn't make the forward run with the bank, we could have lost money as much as minus 15% in France, right? You could have gained money. This is like the carry trade, right? They don't make any forward contract. So just uh, allow the <coughs> uncovered. This is uncovered, right? So we can see that we could have made, if we were trading on the yen, we would have made a profit. If we were trading on sterling, we would have made a loss usually. So Do you have any questions then about what we studied today? So then let's just check our understanding with our partner. So discuss with your partner what is the idea of covered return? Okay, so Kim Yera, <laughs> what is covered return? What does that mean? What kind of risk, what kind of, what are we doing? What are we doing? The risk is covered by forward contract, that's correct. But what are we doing? Well, what are we doing? Who am I? What risk am I covering? Why am I covering risk? What am I doing? Am I fishing? No. What am I doing? <laughs> who are we talking about? Who are, who are we talking about using this? Hmm? Investors, right? I'm investing in another country. So I invest in another currency or another country. Then as I do this investment in another country, I want to cut out the exchange rate risk, right? So I want to get a covered return. So it's the same for the stock market. I invest in stocks. I don't want any exchange rate risk. I make the forward contract. I get a covered return. Okay. So called. Okay. 
then just uh, let's finish there for today. So you can look at just this reading, we just really looked at the graph and the information. So you can look back at the graphs, try to understand the graph and this uh, information, okay? We'll be reading all the documents is a little bit heavy. That's just the... Uh,